This video marks a huge turning point for myself and the channel. A lot of you guys, if you followed for a while, know that I've never really built a super serious car. And things for me la this past year have changed and finally given me a super good reason to do that. I started drifting a little over a year ago. And I'm not counting four or five years ago when my anxiety was so bad that I my brain literally couldn't think. Like I couldn't process and I couldn't drift. In my very first season of grassroots drifting, I placed third overall for the year. I got podium and that was huge for me. And that sort of ignited something in me and made me realize that I really love this and I want to pursue it. Listen, I'm kind of a cheap bastard, I'm gonna be honest. And one of my biggest issues that I've put myself into is I've never equipped myself with the right car, the right tool for the job. So with no expense spared, we're gonna be hopping into that and I'm super excited to show you what we got today. Before we do that, make sure you hop over to 53supply.com because you guys can win the Supra. Every five bucks you spend gets you one entry. This is also the last video I'm gonna be making with uh, my cell phone. So uh, I just got this whole DSLR set up. A lot of you guys have been asking about higher quality and better res. So got a DSLR set up, a really nice new lens, and we're gonna send it with the quality again, like I used to. So we're gonna have to Nate Hamilton's 144 print house and show you guys what I got and what's in store for 2024. I haven't driven. Oh, I love you too, babe. I have not been able to drive lately. This is gonna be super weird. How do I not hurt my foot? Okay, we're good. Let's go check her out, boys. No, little fuel stop at Bussies. Dude, somebody, somebody big mad. <laughs> I feel like this is about to be my set. Oh, Adrian, your car is so sick. Ooh -hoo! I mean, all these cars are cool. I feel like this is about to be my second home for a little bit, boys. I'm back at the 144 print house. And I showed you guys a few things last time that I was here. And uh, there was something here that I ended up buying. Yeah, so we're here with our boy made. Nate. We're he, out here. He made me buy a car. Look, he came to pick up probably a t-shirt and bought a car. He dropped off wheels. I dropped off wheels. And ended up buying a whole I car. I bought a car. Also, I do want to say, I don't know if you guys missed this last video or not, but I want to show off your Get it, dude. GR because it's the coolest thing ever. It's almost done, like it's about to start, yeah? Soon, yeah, like within the next two weeks. Cause you're supposed to get to SEMA. We have two weeks-ish where we're gonna bring Rad Dan down. We're gonna start this thing and hopefully drive it into SEMA. I'm gonna be there when it starts. You gotta let me know. I'll, I will literally pull up. Absolutely. <laughs> let them know where they can find you for the build. So 144 Racing, YouTube, Nate Hamilton on Instagram. Y'all will find us. This is their, their Stroker 3-4 car. Oh, and it's literally like, don't, I've already, sh I should have ended with this. <laughs> now they're gonna see mine. More importantly, dude, this dude shows up one day and just buys a whole car from me. And this car has some history with me, dude. I've been having yeah. this thing around the shop for a few years and I love it. And I just wasn't gonna use it because the new Toyota, you know? My biggest limitation I think in the past is never having a car that's capable. I've kind of like always tiptoed around building a serious car. And that's no surprise to some of you guys, but I think it's time to like finally pull the trigger, do something cool. But Nate had something that just like, it fit the bill, is perfect. And uh, with you guys' help, with sponsors' help, it's gonna be probably the coolest car that I think this channel and I personally have ever seen. So we're gonna talk about it a little bit and, uh, and show you what we got. So this is the 370Z. Obviously you have a bit of a, a story with this, some some reasons that you're not using it. You've done a ton to it. I've talked to Adrian about it a bunch and it's like a, it's an insane car, but yeah, it's like a build that uh, means a lot to me, but also like when we decided to go the Toyota route, like, so for those who don't know, uh, I've been in a Nissan my whole life. And so the natural progression was to go from the S13 to a new Z and it just never happened for me. So this had been sitting around as like a really, really good foundation. One of the, the reasons why this was so appealing to me personally, just to start off was like, everything is 
really well built. Like the base of the car, the canvas of the car is already so awesome. It was almost a no brainer to just be like, okay, I'm already gonna do this to some chassis. Why not do it to one that freaking Formula Drift Pro Nate Hamilton has already built, you know? <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, so I actually got this car in Florida. So back when I was at Njuku Racing, they located a car that had been underwater from a hurricane. So this car is basically uh, new. Blood. Hear that voice? Copar built. Rebuild time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, new chassis. Uh, it's been fully stitch welded. So awesome. It's really like ready to go. Like literally for us, we needed a motor, drivetrain, plumbing, wiring, and she's ready. This is all stuff that I was already planning on doing for another chassis of mine, but this just made sense. So I guess I'll pop the hood. Look at this engine that's in here, boys. It's sick. Hell yeah, dude. Um, so this thing was pretty much ready for LS and stuff like that. You guys had a bunch of swap parts for it. And I think one of the coolest things that was like for me, it's already cut out for like an RTS or just a dog box. Yeah, exactly. The trans tunnel is like fabbed up and ready. Uh, four speed gearbox, V8 engine. Like our plan was to take the 240 and literally throw the drivetrain into this. So like part shop max rack relocation. And then, yeah, you need some motor mounts and an engine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The whole chassis has been uh, steel it, right? So like we used to powder coat chassis and then especially with all the wrecks and the carnage they go through now. I was going to say, it looks really cool. Well, due to Anna, then you can weld on it. So like, oh, no way. You can just like add bars if you need or whatever you may want to finish out. And literally the GR is the same way. It's called it. what? It's called steel it. Listen, it's a spray can no shot yes forsberg taught me the trick so like all the fd dudes are doing it where it's just easier you can huh. weld on it and then you can butter it up like you'll notice when you do weld something on here and you can just steal it over that it'll cure the same way so it looks very that's easy. crazy dude yeah. i was gonna ask what all this is but yeah, that is nuts dude yeah in the engine bay like you could see stitch welding more support it's just a lot so who who did all the with the work so we got the car from injuku from there i brought it to texas man as my 240 took more and more wrecks we were prepping to move out of the 240 <laughs> yeah that guy over there and uh yeah so my boy shiomi garage so travis in iowa and dave woodford they really were the fabricators of this and this is kind of our collective vision on where it's at right now so i will say i've seen a lot of like i've seen a lot of fab just and being around cars this stuff is awesome like welded together super nice like the gussets on the cage super nice like that's that's something that's like sort of a sex appeal for a lot of fabricators don't necessarily do it all the time it's like i feel like if you take pride in your work you're gonna do something like Absolutely. this you know what i mean i was super stoked when we designed the door bar like Sick. travis really took the the like head of design on this but like really i think this is like a european style like offset angled door bars and like gives you a ton of room in here and also kind of cues back up to be Pretty square. Sick, dude. And same with the GR, we've got these other like overhanging bars down here to give you more support. You've got a Willwood pedal set in this thing. Like that's super nice. Like if you guys saw the pedals on my 240, you guys would you guys would cringe. I've been working with broken stuff all the time. This is sick, dude. Yeah, dude, that's like, unreal. This the whole interior of the car is just super nice. Like, yeah, stuff you'll notice is like on the tra top of this trans tunnel, there's a little like service plate. Okay. So then you could come through and just pull this plate off the top. And then, you know, like, oh, yeah. Look down at your bell housing, check the clutch. Like, oh. so. Dude, that's wild. Trans tunnel's ready to go. And then obviously kind of looking backwards here, you then have a bulkhead. So you have uh, a full dude. safety measure there going between you and the fuel cell. Yeah. Um, so obviously we'll probably work some seats out with you. Get the passenger. Yeah, I'm a slightly seat. bigger boy than you, dude, unfortunately. I'm dude, man. I'm like, a bigger boy. I got these Rencaros and they're like one size. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we should hit up Sparko and see what they could do for yeah, you. Yeah, let's do it, bro. It, like this, the, the steering column, like kind of a, a negative, it's a positive negative thing. Cause like in pro spec, you're not supposed to have, but I don't know if that's necessarily that the goal is to compete in pro spec and do formula drift. It's more just like, it's cool to have one less thing that can break, I guess. And uh, it's just solid, so. Yeah, and like, I feel like those rules change often, so maybe right. by the time that comes around, I can <laughs> right. to this. Even that, like, so the car comes with a bunch of stuff I can show you guys here in a little bit, but like, you got the, so you said MA made these? Like, yep, they yep. made these fenders. Yeah, so remember, uh, you know, when I was purchasing stuff for this car, it was probably like two years ago. <laughs> yeah. So Brian at MA had some of these left over from Forsberg's program. Okay. Uh, so this would basically be like a part developed by Chris Forsberg and MA. Okay. And these are just carbon, like dry carbon. They're legit 
like dry carbon, like they're they're teeny tiny, like but they're super strong. It's pretty cool to have stuff like that on the car. So you have to get in there to see, but like we've cut and clearanced out the all, so the actual chassis will be like more like cut like this up top. Yeah, everything's clearanced for you to access all your drift, like. I don't know how to word that. You know, when you tear shit up. 100%. It's all 100%, yeah. Yeah, the whole car is fabbed, which is awesome. Where'd Garen go? Garen, what are you doing, bro? He came out here just to friggin' drink coffee in the shop. <laughs> Come on, bro. This is cool. You've got the, the fuel cell. Like, that's yeah, that's like, huge, too. Yeah, like, these are the basics of some fab. Like, I'm sure there's a little bit of work that you guys need to do to finish it up. But, like, radiators, like, soft-mounted. Fuel cells, hard-mounted. So that just needs some plumbing. This probably needs a little bit of butter to like make sure she's not it properly. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's the core of what this is going to be. The bulkhead allows you to already be safe. Probably. I was going to say, dude, neck. this, this, I think that's one of the things that I don't want to overlook is that stuff, like the firewall and everything, like that stuff that's like kind of a pain. It's the small things that are kind of a pain to set up and like we're not going to have to, we're not going to have to do that. I will say though, I just seen uh, on Josiah's Corvette, he put a little like window in his spiral. Oh, like, right I think we should take a note from that. I'm like, down. A little plexiglass. See out back. Sometimes the bulkheads, when they're right behind the driver's seat like this, sure. They just feel like a tight cabin. Maybe That's we'll do, fair. Maybe we'll do a little That's fair. That's that. easy to do. Get a little creative in there. Another, I guess the, the car is what it is. You guys have seen pretty much most of it. And it's just a really solid car. That's like a really, like I said in the beginning, it's a really good platform. Like it's a perfect canvas to get going because I was going to, like in order to get competitive, it's like Pro-Am for where I'm at, all these guys show up with super gripped up chassis and seven to a thousand horse, you know, 700 to a thousand horsepower. I'm not gonna be near that. Like, so you have to have a serious engine, a good drivetrain, um, and that's pretty much all it, it takes. But like, I was gonna have to take one of my cars, completely rip it apart and start from scratch. And it's kind of nice to have something that's already fabricated better than anything that I currently have fabricated and go from there. Okay, I don't want to tear apart my 240. I'd rather either keep it as it is and simple or sell it and, and do something like this. So I'm able to just get the engine I want, the transmission I want, and the rear end that I want. And that's another thing, I guess, this car comes with a ton of stuff. You barely fit in that thing, bro. I'd be, I'd be freaking eat, eeping out the sides. This thing's sick, dude. Dude, look, it almost touches my <laughs> legs. <laughs> well, Nate and I are short, so. This car is made for short people, so it's also, it's kind of, it's perfect. Garen's not showing it, but he's, he's pretty excited about it. He didn't want to tell you guys. He's scared. I think the biggest thing is going to be creating a car that doesn't break for me. Or at least has the less, less chances of breaking. You guys know, if you guys have watched for a while, I'm really good at breaking stuff. I'm more talented at that than I think anything else in my life. I think the biggest thing for me is gonna be just having something that has a good powertrain, that's solid, that's competitive, but like that doesn't break. So uh, axles right here, that's for a Winters rear end. That's right, so, yep. Yep. Quick change is... I would say it's gonna be tough for you to break them. Like yeah. obviously there is ways to break them, but yeah, this is like, Drive shaft shop axles, hopefully coming off of a winners or with yeah. the bulldogs. Bulldog to the drive shaft shops. That's gonna be a solid rear end. Exactly, and it's like it's more of a quality of life thing. Where it's like when you don't have to, like when you can drive as much as you possibly can without having downtime. Yep, that's a huge thing. But dude, then you're gonna be able to go to the track and gear the car for the track. That's huge. That's gonna be so sick. So this is the first car that I think I've ever just like kind of bit the bullet and just said I'm I have to go 100 percent on this because. I've never done that before. Uh, and I'm you have to, to do that for motorsports. Dude, you know? you're gonna love it. It's gonna be tough to break. All of I say that and it's gonna be <laughs> All no, of my friends to... though are just telling me, they're like, dude, stop racing half mm -hmm. built cars, which like, okay, hurt my feelings a little bit. But like, but it's it's real though. You gotta have like a super prepped car to, to do, if you wanna take it seriously, yeah. you gotta take it seriously. What's the style? What wheels are you gonna go for? I don't know. Yeah, I, some, I think I want to do some Volks. Ooh, I'm just I don't know. Tease is kind of gangster. Knock on wood, I haven't broken any wheels yet. Dude, so. I blew up a '57 C. I know, I saw, I saw, and that made me a little sad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're gonna be working with Fitment Industries next year, so like, who knows? Like, you know, freaking dude. empty canvas, dude. But I'm genuinely that. excited, and I'm I'm stoked to be able to work with you know 144 like dudes of this capacity. Like, that's not. So that's not really something that everybody can well, so, have an opportunity to do. And the you know? plan is for you to come into the shop more, right? Yeah. You're gonna bring the car, but keep the car. Move here. to Denton. And <laughs> <laughs> He's got a camper out back. <laughs> Grateful for the expertise. Yeah, dude. Like it's not something that a lot of people can get, and so. And it'll mean a lot to me to see the car get completed here. Yeah. Like that'll be so. Cool. That's cool. It'll it'll be completed, and you guys can count on that too. <laughs> this is the one car I've actually like budgeted for, and as I'm like ready to complete. Cool. I'm really bad at that. Do you have a date that you 
people want to drift it first? Like, is it yes. January? Shakedown at January the latest. Okay, cool. It's like, it's like the... Well, dude, we got a lot of good work stuff. to do. We got to get all your parts out off the shelf. We'll figure it out, and then you got to start planning on installing some. I, it's a simple video. I wanted to do a walk around and have Nate talk about the car, um, show you guys 144 a little bit more, but you guys will see plenty of it, see all the cool stuff that they have. So make sure you guys go subscribe to him and check their stuff out because their builds are super awesome. Nate's a killer driver, wins everything ever. Um, Not true. You can look at it this way if you want, but I, I really don't want it to be viewed as me building a super overbuilt car because I would certainly say, whether you've seen it personally or not, that my skill does match what I'm asking this car to be doing for me. Between the amount of time I've put on the sim and the physical seat time I've had this year alone, I've learned a ton and I'm, I'm truly ready to get into a car, at least to prove to myself whether or not I could do it, you know what I mean? So a super gripped up car that is truly going to test my capabilities is exactly where I want to be in 2024. And to see if this is truly something that I really want to pursue for a long time because I've really kind of lost my place for a while and sort of found myself again. And so, yeah, like it's a formula drift car, but like it's also going to hopefully hold together and uh, do its job and keep me in the driver's seat, which is truly what I have been wanting for myself really for a really long time. In my marriage vows, I told my wife that I would be her race car driver for forever. And my anxiety prevented me from doing any sort of motorsports for years. And I finally dialed that back with a lot of doctor's visits and brain scans and stuff. Now that that's sort of dialed in, I'm ready to pursue what I've wanted to pursue since I was a young lad. Even though I'm almost 30, I feel like I'm finally getting started with something that I've wanted to do. So with, with all that being said, I want you guys to know that I, I know my audience is like 18 and up. I don't have many kids following me. So, you know, the guys out there that are 18 to 35 or higher, it's never too late to get started on something. Sometimes life just takes a while. Like I said, I'm almost 30. And most people thought when I was 25, 23, 24, 25, when I was, you know, acquiring all these cars that I had it figured out, that I was done and I had achieved it all, like I hadn't even begun yet because I was still learning who I was and figuring stuff out. And I've sort of now finally kind of realized that a lot of stuff's changed. You know, I don't, I don't want to flex anymore. I used to, you know, YouTube used to be all about the flex and, you know, I'm 22 and I have three Supras and a GTR. And it's like, now I'm like, dude, I'm almost 30. I'm tired of, of having all the nice stuff. I want to simplify my life and pursue what I want to actually do and use my money the best way possible while also maintaining retirement plans and like and planning for my my kids lives uh you know for the next 20 something years and on I don't know I uh it's never too late to start guys and don't let anybody shame you for being late because guess what you are where you are no matter what like you can't reverse time but you can take advantage of today and that's what I want to leave you guys with today I know today was a lot of talking, but there'll be a lot of driving and super cool stuff coming soon enough. But I wanna thank Nate and all the 144 guys. They're super awesome and I'm stoked to work with them. Love you all, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next video. Peace. I'll make sure you guys go win my super. Ah!